Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. And so finally it's time to review the first of the two Kriegsmessers or Grossmessers that Landsknecht Emporium sent to me uh, a little while ago. And uh, you know, this review is incredibly easy for me because I'm going to start off by saying go and buy one now, okay? This is a sweet, sweet sword. Um, on so many levels. First of all, they've captured the medieval aesthetic. It doesn't look like a modern factory produced um, or even kind of like modern machine produced item. It looks like the kind of things that you see in museums but as if it was new rather than obviously hundreds of years old. Um, even the little details of the way that the, um, the uh, nuggle there is, is the pin comes through and is peened on the other side there, it's hand peened. It looks like the real thing. The construction as well, they haven't given any concessions to modern constructional methods. This grip, uh, now I was surprised to find this out and you might be as well, so many people have likened these swords to medieval European katanas. Well. In many ways, that is obviously kind of true in their, in their general kind of silhouette. But it's true in a way that I couldn't possibly have imagined because I've never specifically researched this type of sword. But Landsknecht Emporium and their colleagues, uh, people like James Elmsley as well, who's um, sort of consulted for them, I believe, have studied these swords to a great degree. And something that really surprised me about the construction of these grips is they're not made, not these examples anyway, and not all, nor, not all Messer examples like that, aren't made simply like two wooden slab scales on the side of a full width tang, like uh, you'd be used to with a knife. Um, but these are actually a hidden tang, and they're secured by not rivets through the grip, but wooden pegs, that's right, wooden pegs. So even the hilt construction is a little bit like a Japanese sword. Fascinating. Uh, but we've got the very characteristic nuggle there, uh, which obviously provides some protection to the uh, outside of the hand and assists with uh, winding actions that we're doing blade on blade, um, which I might look at in another video actually. Um, but back to the review of this sword, it is it is absolutely sweet. It's got the medieval, uh, medieval aesthetic. It feels wonderful in the hand. Yes, it has got blade presence because that's the type of sword it is. But it is akin and yet again feels quite similar to a well-made katana. Uh, it has blade presence but it's not a heavy sword. It's still relatively light. Uh, it feels nimble and quick despite the fact that you don't have any you know, pommel or anything out here. Counterbalancing this blade is purely a, uh, a, a facet of the fact that it's got very good distal taper, weight distribution, and it has a lengthened grip, of course, which provides a certain amount of counterbalance in itself, at least the tang as well. Um, so it feels great in the hand, it tracks, it moves around, edge alignment, made nice and easy because you've got a curved blade which assists with edge alignment. You've also got a grip which you can see there is much thinner this way than it is that way so it feels flat yet comfortable in the hand. Uh, very very nicely done. As mentioned the grip is made of wood over a hidden tang, wooden pegs uh, through and then over the top of that is a leather cover. Minor, minor, not really a point of criticism, but a, a note so that it doesn't look like I'm only saying, uh, you know, just glowingly positive things, although I am mostly saying glowingly positive things. Um, the join on the uh, leather at the front, I feel could be a little bit more cleanly done. Um, and I do feel that with repeated use, especially in test cutting, this is a sharp, so that's predominantly what this is going to be used for, uh, that that seam will lift up. It's not stitched, it is, as far as I can tell, simply uh, overlapped and glued. So I think that that wheel will peel away. So that's maybe something to look at. Um, the guard, absolutely secure. Very interesting thing that with these types of guards and these types of swords, instead of coming up the tang, they are often uh, brought down the blade and then pinned through by that rivet that comes through the uh, nuggle there, which I mentioned. Um, the edge has got lovely distal taper. It's not a colossal amount of distal taper on this blade, I have to say. It starts off, I'm just guessing here from eyesight, but I'm sensing that's about six maybe seven millimeters thick down here, and it goes to down to about, uh, probably about three millimeters um, down here. So there is distal taper, but not a huge amount with this type of blade, but it, it just kind of doesn't need it. It just feels right as it, as it is. Um, and not all swords, of course, have distal taper, and not all have the same degree of distal taper. Um, as I say, the guard's beautifully made, nice little um, filed details at the end there. Uh, the uh, nargle, or whatever you want to call that, I'm not really sure what that plate, should we call it a shell 
guard, side guard, um, is beautifully made. Again, it's got the handmade look that you find on medieval objects. It's not like something that's been cast or CNC'd. It looks like the originals. Everything's solid and tight. But one of the reasons that this sword really glows, apart from it's just how it looks and how it feels is wonderful, um, is that is a pretty sharp edge, okay? And I've been talking a little bit about edge sharpness recently. Uh, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go outside and have a little bit of a chop of some bottles. Caveat, as always, that water bottles are water bottles. They're not analogs for any particular part of a body or any type of animal, vegetable or mineral. Uh, they are just water bottles, but Cutting water bottles gives us some information. It tells us something about um, acceleration and um, blade control, uh, how easy it is to manage edge alignment. It obviously says something about me as well. Um, a lot of, you know, the, the user is controlling the weapon. Uh, but it also tells you about the sharpness of the blade and the edge geometry of the blade. There are certain edge geometries which struggle with water bottles and swords which aren't really sharp enough also struggle with water bottles. So let's take it outside and have a little bit of a cut and then uh, regroup afterwards. So as was hopefully ably demonstrated there by um, Silent Matt, um, this is a beautiful cutting sword. And I've often talked about the fact that I concede that katanas are really good cutting swords. And if you want to do backyard cutting, test cutting, katanas are a really good type of sword to actually start out with. Now, not to overplay and not to give the impression that this is literally like a katana, it's not, but it does share some of the similar features. It is a pretty stiff blade. Um, having a curved blade assists stiff 
stiffness because you don't get the oscillations moving up and down in a straight line like you do with a straight blade so curved blades don't wibble as much as uh, straight blades do it is fairly broad it's got good distal taper it's got a nice fuller in the back there so you get a good kind of uh, lightness to stiffness ratio um, it, it's got gr easy easy to edge a line because it's slightly curved and because you've got that lovely uh, flat grip that really aids orientation, having that long cross guard also assists in feeling which direction the edge is pointing in because of course the cross guard points in the same direction as the edge. So this is a sweet cutting sword. It's not particularly long, as you can see. You also saw there the, it's relatively manageable in one hand. I would liken this to a short long sword or bastard sword. That is, it's a sword that predominantly wants to be used as a two-handed sword, as a two-handed saber, essentially, in this case. Um, but it is uh, also a sword that you can, at a push, use in one hand. Anyway, I hope this has been a useful review. Of course, Lance Connect uh, Emporium's link is below. They are making gorgeous stuff. I love everything I've seen out of them so far. This sword is no exception to that. It is a beautiful piece and really captures the feel and the look of this type of sword from this period. And it, if you want a sword for cutting things in your back garden, then this is a prime, prime candidate. Lovely edge, lovely feel, great cutter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon for another review of one of these and for one of my other videos as well. Cheers folks! Thanks for watching, we've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!